WEMF, presented by the Sound Museum Boston. You mentioned the, the ballot box, right? So in Massachusetts, we've gone to the ballot box, and you know we don't always get what we want when we vote for it, right? In terms of this medical marijuana legislation that we have going yep. right now, you know, and so we have a situation where we voted for it, and the state has completely you know, sat idle, sat on their hands, or obfuscated the process of it actually happening. So I, yep. you were invited, right, to a to a action that's going to be happening in front of the DPH in order to uh, send a message that patients need access to medicine now, right? And yep. that, that yep. would be October the 14th. Do you, do you support that? Do you plan on attending that? that? If, I don't think I'm able to be there, but I support it. And, and, uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a number of reasons for this. One of them is, Forget for a second that it's about medical marijuana, because that can make it confusing for most voters. If, if you hear about the fact that the state passed a law via ballot initiative saying that this kind of um, medicine should be available to patients, and two years later it still isn't implemented, you'd be appalled. Now, the fact that it's marijuana makes it so that people, because there's, a, we, there's this odd um, stigma attached to it, it makes it so that people get very scared about how to handle it. And you'll hear people that are in this race always give half answers on anything to do with medical marijuana. Um, but it's it's the law. It's the law. And we need to be able to deal with that reality. Uh, and it's, it's incredible to me because there's a few other examples of this. One of them, we just had a forum about people that do human, human services workers. So these are people that are working with people that have disabilities, veterans, seniors. And there was a law passed by the state also back in, 2010 requiring that they get a pay raise and the state still hasn't implemented it. And these are workers making on average about $12 an hour. So it isn't just medical marijuana that gets treated this way. Absolutely. It seems like for some, it seems like for some people, the law is optional. Um, and that for, for the people that are in our politics, if the, major, if the overwhelming majority of voters said that there should be medical marijuana available to patients and there are patients who need it and the state doesn't implement it, the only uh, recourse we have is to vote in new people. Yeah. And it's it's why I founded the United Independent Party, because i got to tell you, the people that are doing this stuff now, um, they're not going to wake up one day and suddenly say, you know, I think what we're going to do is start implementing laws that have been passed. <laughs> well, I know. That's exactly it, because, you know, we're, we're there's a protest on Tuesday, and they're starting a DPH and going to the governor's office. They've been there before. Mm -hmm. There's two local moms that we're all watching right now, Evan. I have to tell you about this. Um, yep. They have young children, young girls. Um, two moms and the kids, we watched them have seizures. Frank went and saw this woman's kid having seizures over and over again. Um, the girl's been developmentally delayed, and apparently there's a strain of marijuana that's 20 to 1, the ratio to CBD to THC. It's not the stuff that people like us like to smoke. It's not the stuff that gets you high. It's the other stuff. It's this, this rare strain that's only for certain patients, for these kids. And they can't get it because... The DPH restricted the caregivers. They got rid of the whole program. They're saying, wait for dispensaries. Who knows how long? Wait for the system to Just get be set patient. Up. Yeah, be patient. Wrong. And the kids Terrible. having seizures. Like, if you were governor, would you help these two moms? Would you help these two kids get that medicine? Would you help bring yeah. back caregivers' service to them? I, I, I would, and it's both because it's the right thing to do, but also because it's the law. It's the law. You know, we, we passed a law. We had this discussion. You know, the, the law was passed, and the, the obligation of our people in government is to implement the law. And when when we live in a in a in a in a time in our country where the law is apparently optional, um, it's very worrisome. And now think about this: sixteen percent voted in the primary. The Charlie Baker and Martha Coakley are counting on very low turnout in the general election, so they can get into office. I don't have any confidence either one of them is going to go and do something to deal with this issue that we're talking about. Um, they, when they've been asked about this issue, they get very uncomfortable um, and don't really have much to say about it other than, you know, the process has been bad and we should look at ways to do it better. And I'm sure they would say things like be patient. But I, I don't know how you can look at a patient uh, in, in the eyes who's suffering with something that could be helped by something that has been made legal and say to them, you can't have it because we just haven't been able to figure out how to, how to make it available. And that's, that's just a that's child, just nonetheless. Right. A child, you yeah. know, not even, not even a, a full bodied, abled adult, a, a child they do that to. Yeah, that's just, terrible. Yeah, that's having the whole life developmentally delayed. The child it's isn't terrible. even able to be, isn't able to grow, isn't able to progress mentally or physically because. They're having seizures over and over again. It's, it's, it's terrible. 
it's just terrible. I mean, it's heartbreaking when you listen to those stories. And I've, I've read um, things you've been writing about about that, and and, I, and just the process of how this whole thing is playing out is is a reflection of a political establishment that just doesn't take people very seriously. And you know, the the anger and the frustration that people feel um, when they see that a candidate's disinvited from a debate, they they got to channel that on November fourth and vote. You know, they're, they're, the deadline to register to vote is October 15th. So if you haven't registered already, people got to get out there and go down to your town clerk and register. You know, if you're a student and you live here, you've you got a lease, you've got something that shows you live in Massachusetts, take that down there, get yourself registered to vote. Don't let these kinds of things continue because the people in power are very comfortable. They're, they don't seem interested in, in what you think. And uh, it can change at the ballot box. And that's where it will change. I agree. I, I you know, my number one, I gave a speech at this uh, rally this year for marijuana legalization and, and medical. And I said, the number one thing you can do is get registered to vote if you're not and, and vote for Evan Felchuk. That's I really, true. I, I was believe, there. I was there. <laughs> I really do believe that. Like that, that's yeah. what people need to do right now. If they want this to pro- progress right now, yeah. that's what you can do. And uh, thank you for some reminding people. If you're not registered, get registered right now, or this week, like Monday, Tuesday, like now. Yeah. Like go, go online Monday and register morning. to vote. Yeah. WEMF.